Wow, I'm surprised to see so many people here with the game on today. But don't tell me what the score is. So as John mentioned, I'm with Edgecast, and I'm here to spend the next all of five minutes talking to you about web performance. So why does web performance really matter? Why is it so important for us? Well, if you look at the landscape of internet usage right now, by at 2013, which was last year, um, we see that 66% of all internet traffic usage was IP video. And this is expected to go up to 79% by 2018. At the same time, in 2018, CDNs are expected to be carrying over half of all video traffic on the internet. But the thing is, it's not just about the increase in consumption. As consumption goes up, so do end users' expectations for quality and for reliability. So 4K video is coming. It's coming fast, and we all have to be ready for it. And I think we've all experienced a little bit of frustration with buffering or black screen while we're streaming a video. So initially, my talk was going to be about web performance and why does it matter in the grand scheme of things. But we are in the middle of the largest sporting, the largest sporting event in the world, and I thought I would hijack it a little bit and talk about how we at Edgecast approach web performance for our customers who are supporting events around the World Cup. So one of the challenges that we get when customers come to us and say we need you to be able to support a large event is that they give us an end user number and they say we need you to scale for X number of end users. But we're a bandwidth business. So in this case, we rely very heavily on our data. And from there, we analyze stream usage and traffic patterns to understand how we translate the end user number into bandwidth. With that information, we also analyze our traffic distribution across all of our points of presence. And from there, we're able to identify which pops we're going to need to scale for network capacity. We hand this off to our network engineering team, who then managed to scale us up in a terabytes in a matter of months. So network optimization is not really just about our CDN network. It's also about the first mile. Some of our customers, especially in the case of live events, will have their own origin. And we, we need to be able to optimally get to that content. And so we do path analysis to make sure that we are consistently optimal in our getting of the customer content. So network optimizations are one aspect of what we do, but we also have to focus on application optimizations. And for this, we tackle this at every tier of our application. Whether we're setting up customized um, HTTP rules, whether we're doing specific cache fill optimizations, prefetching, or configuring uh, origin shields, this is something that we handle for every single customer on a customer-by-customer -customer basis. The other thing that we do is we actually dog food our own products. So Route DNS is a product that we recently launched, and we use it because it has these defensive DNS rules that enable us to do a couple of really cool things. I think they're cool anyway. One of them being that it allows us to shed traffic to nearby pops in case of pop saturation. The other thing it does is it allows us to schedule traffic distributions around game time loads. And one thing to note is that as we get nearer to the games, we actually do... We're very, very careful about how we release code, and we try not to like, let everybody release code in the same capacity that they do all the time, because when you're trying to focus on stability around large events, the last thing you need is everybody's hands in the cookie jar. So performance optimization, it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. We continuously monitor, collect data, analyze, learn, tune, optimize, and do it over and over and over again. Some of you may have seen our chief architect's presentation yesterday talking about the measurement maturity model. And we also have a presentation later today about a tool that we call Ghostfish. And it's a tool that we use to replay production traffic in our test environments. Both are great examples of our continued focus on collecting, analyzing, and learning from our data. This is our NOC, by the way, our West Coast NOC. But um, one thing that is always really important for us at, Edge, at Edgecast is our focus on our customers. Because as engineers, we get so wrapped up in optimizing, and then we actually forget about the customer. But at Edgecast, everything we do, everything is really geared towards optimizing the customer to end user experience. For, for events like the World Cup, we actually try to go an extra step. So in this case, we created a work group of subject matter experts, across engineering and operations who met weekly and as the games got nearer, started meeting daily to make sure that we had full coordination across all efforts. To reduce issue resolution time, we actually double our on-call presence during the games and we also set up war rooms during every single game with a live bridge for all of our customers to make sure that we're on the phone with them, catching issues as they come up. This is for our DevOps team, by the way. So being able to apply performance optimization methodologies in order for us to help our customers achieve web performance for a huge event like the World Cup is incredibly exciting for us. 
We have had a lot of lessons learned so far, and I'm sure we'll continue to have more lessons learned as the games go on. And hopefully, we'll be able to share those with you, maybe at the next Velocity Conference. Thank you very much.